Hello, hello, my name is Emilio. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. We're gonna be talking about the home lab and a rack. What are we talking about when we're talking about a rack? Now, we're not talking about a rack of ribs, even though that sounds really good right now. We're actually talking about having a server rack, a cabinet where you can stick stuff inside of it. Servers can come in all different shapes and sizes, right? You can get desktop tower-based servers, you can get little mini servers, you can get rack servers, and you can get blade servers. So I had this idea a little while ago, and I'm gonna show you what I've actually got set up right here in my environment. And maybe I can give you some ideas and some tips around how you can actually get started with a home server rack environment. Hey, before we do get into that, please do remember, as always, click on the subscription button on the bell so you don't miss out on any of our video releases. A little side note as well, if you wanna learn a lot more about tech in general, you wanna get better at Windows Server, Active Directory, you wanna know more about network security, IT management, interview help for going for an IT job, I've got a whole bunch of training courses. So in the video description of this video, you've got links there to some of my training courses, which have been seen by thousands and thousands of people. So you don't wanna miss out on those. I've got myself a rack server. This is a rack server that I picked up a little while ago and it is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I love this thing, it is powerful, it is gutsy, and hey, it does what I need it to do. And because it's a rack configuration, it sticks inside of a server rack. Servers in the corporate world, in the enterprise world, come in all different shapes and sizes. They can come small, they can come a little bit bigger, they can come in this rack configuration. And of course, the whole purpose of one of these things is to actually put it inside of a rack. Uh, yeah, you can buy yourself a rack server and just stick it under your bed, stick it in a closet somewhere. But really the main intention of this is to put it inside of a server rack rails on the sides, on the left and the right. And it just sort of slides into place, slides inside of your rack and then it's kept in this nice little spot. And of course, the nice thing about having a server rack or a server cabinet is that, hey, I can put all my tech gear in there I can make it look nice, I can cable it, I can label it, and then I can relocate it very, very easy. I just pick the thing up. Well, you don't pick it up because it's pretty stinking heavy. You maybe roll it, because mine's got wheels on the bottom. A lot of these racks have got wheels on the bottom, and you can just roll it and move it around from place to place. But the nice thing about having a actual cabinet is that it's all in the one spot. Because here's the deal, when I started out, when I started out building my, well, I thought I wanted to build my uh, my lab, right? My home lab at home. Of course, my lab being a spot where I could just learn stuff. I wanted to just play around with stuff. I was working in technology, but I wanted to learn more. I wanted to tinker around with the techie geek stuff that my workplace would not let me play around with because you're not like experienced enough. So I had to sort of, all right, fine. You're not gonna let me play with it at work. I'm gonna start playing around with it at home. So I sort of took it upon myself to go and build the thing myself and start learning. And that involved me having to go onto eBay and finding old cheapy stuff. Had myself some old computers and I could get started. And then I knew a little bit about networking. And you know, here's another thing that I did is I actually went to my friends and to my family and said, hey, do you, do you guys have like old computers, old laptops that you're not actually using? And most people did. And they said, yeah, I don't need it anymore. It's in my cabinet somewhere. I was about to throw it out but here you go, you can have it. So I was like, yes, great job. I can actually now have this and start adding it into my lab. As long as I had a good enough router, as long as you know I had good enough internet connection out to the interwebs, got it all connected together, had all the network points on the switch. I then had all of my tech gear, my computers, and then I could start setting it all up. And that's sort of how I got started. And it was really, really easy to do, but then my lab started to build up, right? Started to get bigger and bigger. And then I wanted more power. I wanted more grunt. I wanted something that I could actually deploy some proper server software onto it. Because yeah, you can run like Windows Server, you can run, you know, CentOS Server or Red Hat Server on a old laptop if you really want to. But should you? Well, maybe it's just not gonna run very good. It's gonna run pretty slow because these old older computers are not gonna have a lot of resources, not a, there's not a lot of CPU cores, there's not a lot of RAM in them, uh, and hard drive space is gonna be limited. So you're gonna have some limitations. So you can only build so much. So eventually I upgraded my gear, I upgraded my tech. And that involved, as I said, going and buying some old gear, selling some stuff on eBay, and then buying better stuff. So then it grew and it grew and it grew. And then eventually, I mean, I had it all in the corner of my room of my office. It was just uh, big, clunky, didn't look very neat. And look, I, I like things to, to look nice, to look ordered. I like things to be cabled up well. I eventually have to jump full on into buying myself a server rack. 
uh, and that's what I did. So I went onto my local eBay and I found a company that was relocating from one office to another. They also were upgrading their server rack and they didn't need their old one. So I bought one that was pretty small, like it wasn't uh, huge. You can go for a big one. I mean, they all come in different configurations, right? Different heights and different depths. And that's something that I'm gonna recommend to you as well is when you're looking, if you're thinking about getting yourself a server rack, is make sure you get the one that is the proper dimensions. Because I'll tell you, so many people are like, yeah, I bought myself this really cheap uh, server rack. And then they find out that when they eventually buy themselves a server that is of a rack configuration, it doesn't fit. Or uh, they buy one that is like really cheap, really small, but then they figure out, oh no, that's actually meant to be for mounting on the wall. And it's only really made for switches and for routers and firewalls, little tech, little networking tech. It's not made for a server and then you're in trouble. So make sure that you're looking at the proper dimensions of your server rack and the proper height. Now the height is going to be relevant for growth. So have a think about right now, what is the stuff that you're wanting to throw into your server rack? and then go from there. And then think about the future. Like, what do you wanna build in future? Maybe down the track you're saving up some cash and you do wanna buy yourself some better gear. Well then consider buying one that is slightly taller. It's always better to have a little bit more. Like the last thing that you wanna do is you, you don't wanna regret buying one that is a certain height and then later on you go, ah, I should have bought myself a bigger one and it's too late. You're now gonna have to go and find another one and spend more dough. We don't want that. So get yourself one that is big enough. So I bought myself that one that sort of gave me a good five years of life, right? Five years where I could upgrade stuff and uh, makes it really, really easy. The other thing that I did, I wanted to make sure that it had uh, built-in fans. I wanted to make sure that the rails inside of it were actually in there because some people actually are selling racks without the rails. I know, crazy. Or without the actual nuts and bolts. Because uh, what you're going to need to do is you're going to grab these nuts and bolts and you put them into the rails inside of the cabinet and then you attach the other end, the, the rails to the servers and to your storage and stuff and then you slide it in. So you may have to buy a rack and then buy those nuts and bolts later on if they're not coming with that. And then the fan as well. I mean, do you want to keep the thing cool or not? Because these things are going to get pretty hot, right? You're going to have all of this big tech gear inside of your rack and it's going to get hot over time. So it's sometimes good to have a fan built into the unit at the very top and it just plugs into your normal power. Makes it really, really cool. Here's the other thing, is some of the gear that you may have, especially if you're starting out building uh, home stuff and you've got a whole bunch of home computers, is most of home devices uh, don't rack very well. Like they're, they're not designed, like if you've got an old desktop or a laptop that you're wanting to use, well, that doesn't really rack into a server rack. So then what you do is you buy trays. Now, sometimes you may actually find a server rack that has the trays built in. Great, otherwise you can go and buy them. They're not expensive. I picked them up for like 40 bucks uh, on eBay for an actual tray itself. That way I slide that sucker in and then I can put my stuff on top of the trays and that way it just looks a little bit nicer. Because here's the thing that I found, this is this is what I actually um started doing and then I realized, now nah, why am I doing it this way? Is you can be tempted to start putting things on top of each other. You buy something and then you just put something on top of it, something on top of it, something on top of it, uh, rather than separating it with proper trays. And what you're gonna find is over time, the things are just gonna start running hotter. You want good ventilation, you want good airflow inside of a cabinet. So separating the things with trays, with rails, if you've got rails on like a server, is pretty good, pretty good to do because you want to have a bit of better airflow, right? A lot of people are going to do this slightly differently and, and having worked in tech for a while, a lot of businesses sometimes do it diff like differently. We're talking here about the uh, the order of things. And what I would generally recommend as a good practice, if, you're, if you've got just the one server rack, start with your networking gear at the very top and then work your way down. Your networking gear at the very top, then maybe your servers, then your storage, and then down the bottom, like your UPS units. UPS being like for your power, uninterrupted power supplies and things like this. So an order is pretty important. Something else that I like to do is I like to have uh, my server rack with uh, like glass or perspex clear on the very front so I can actually see inside of it. A lot of these are gonna come uh, with a door that you can't even see. Uh, some of them may not even come with a door. So if you want to show off all your stuff with no door, that's fine. And the other thing that was really helpful is making sure that I found a rack that had at the side panels could be removed quite easily. Because uh, once you've put stuff in there, it's pretty annoying to get access to everything. So especially when you're routing cables and power and everything like this, 
having access to the to the side panels and opening it up really recommend that one big time now look um if you want to know more about the server itself and whether i should be going for a small medium big rack server uh, i've got a whole other video where we're talking about that topic specifically so you may want to go and check that one out where we talk about exactly what is the best configuration for you in a home and why right so that's a good one to go and watch but yeah i mean i totally am going to recommend getting yourself a server rack at home is going to be the best and then you know what's cool is because it's at home uh you can pimp the thing up you can then make it look pretty schnazzy uh i, I put like led lights inside of mine just because i'm like because i could at work i don't need led lights like who cares about led lights at work but because i'm going to be seeing the thing and i'm going to be showing it off and i'm going to be like hey look john john smith check out my awesome server cabinet I wanted it to look nice as well. So I made sure that it was decked out nicely. Little caveats or conduits where I could run my cables through so that overall the thing could look better. But yeah, if you've got the dough, if you've got the cash, and if you wanna make the thing look better, work better, keeping it cool is important. And then it makes it easy to just move the thing around. It allows you to sort of keep everything in one spot. Get yourself a server rack. Hey, subscribe, do the like button, do the bell as well so you don't miss out on anything. Hopefully this video helped you out. And if you did, let us know down below in the comments. Let me know if I missed anything, any tips that you can give me as well to maybe make my server rack a little bit better. And that's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.